York is the barbarian here. Before the founding of House Yorkie, before Yorkshire was even on the map, so was my people. The brigands of Brigantia. So let me take you back in time. To my time in Galarian, with more Pathfinder, Kingmaker. Now. We are working on getting some promotions, etc. Arcane rank 3 reached. Rushlack tournament has begun. Oops. That was a mistake. The general gave a speech about how the hardest steel emerges from the hottest flame. Really impressed the soldiers who embraced this vision so deeply, they, uh, they agree even the most punishing drills is a chance to show their worth. Sentinel failure. Kind of expect a new clockwork comrade in arms dealt many of the other guards, yeah. Uh, the heroine accepted a generous gift, a plot of land. Many passionate knights and commanders are now excited to follow in her footsteps. Missing ambassador. What's the relations at, by the way? 45. Yeah. The king's servants managed to find the criminals responsible for the ambassador's disappearance. It was a local bandit gang. The identity of their employer remains unknown, but the king's name has officially been cleared. Faster development, less time to raise rank. Let's see what we have here. Rulers competition, a semi-annual abundance uh, competition between the rulers of the river kingdoms will soon be. Oh, that's an opportunity. Are we any problems? Yes, changelings. Not a lot of chance. Terrified parents swear that someone is taking their children and leaving something else in their place. Oh dear. Sort it out. Lindsay is terrified. What the hell's going on, Lindsay? Companions have come up with an unusual idea. Uh, we can still go to the Rushlight Tournament, so I guess we'll do that without promoting anyone else. Lindsay's eyes glitter and the nostrils flare with rage, but for some reason she speaks in a whisper. Such, such insolence! Such unforgivable, monstrous, unimaginable insolence! What's happened, Lindsay? The throne, the throne, it... Lindsay stops whispering and silently points her finger to the far side of the throne room. Ooh! The place where the royal throne once stood is now empty. This is... unexpected. I'm surprised by your self-control if I were be on a rampage. Shameless scum, how could they go and rob the royal palace with the king still alive and well? In fact, our case is blatant and extraordinary, but hardly exceptional. Word on the street is that the local population becomes sick and tired of thieves. They break into people's homes, bypass the locks and latches, and steal everything they can. And now the scum has the guts to meddle in royal property. We need to sort this out before they steal the whole kingdom one brick at a time. And we need to get back your throne. It's shameful. Lindsay regains control of herself. Continues in a low whisper. I really hope your people here won't go wagging their tongues and spreading filthy rumours. Where shall we begin, Linz? You should start with in, uh, interrogating potential wit witnesses. I think the captain of the guard was in the palace at the time. He was the one who discovered the throne was missing, at least. Then he should go to the city. I heard the smith was robbed recently. Maybe he can give some clues. And if I were you, I'd talk to the trader. Uh, he might have some hints as to who might be stealing stolen goods. One more thing, don't forget to visit the innkeeper. Who better to glean information from? That's fair enough. If I managed to catch this thief, Lisa shakes her head. Whatever your upcoming plans were, retrieving the throne must be your top priority. That's not good. What were my guards doing? Lindsay flings a bram. Well, you weren't on the throne at the time. It was stolen, right? And if our guards are trained to guard people, not furniture, the bard gives you a faint smile. Sure, if the throne was stolen, with you still sitting on it, things would be much worse. It's not much consolation, though. Time to get going. <laughs> OK. 
Oh, before we do, let's uh, see what else. Trade with Dagger Mark. No, we're on the wrong thing here. Ooh. Don't care about that then. Yep, not interested. Celebrity. This one again. Give it a go. Safe refuge. Valerie. Slight chance. So we can see if we can look after them. Lindsay. Yeah. Live livestock. Group of travelling slave traders looking for human commodities. They're offering a good price for any criminals and other prisoners. Lindsay, sort them out. And then King York is barbarian proudly said, Your evil deeds end now, or is it better as we've uncovered the, your vile plan? Lindsay is trying to write something on the go, but she interrupts herself and looks up. Oh, your highness, we have unbelievably, terribly important news. Manage to find out, discover, invent, will you? Lindsay points the sword to tell her, he'll tell you. The storyteller waits patiently until Lindsay finishes her ardent speech. I will have to begin from afar to let you see what I saw with my own blind eyes. The stolen lands are like a cradle in an abandoned house, in which the wind swings the skeleton of a child. No new, few newborn kingdoms have died here, just after taking their first breath. I have collected their stories, these precious stars that have been lost to dust, and I begin to notice some commonalities. It is like a pattern that repeats across different embroideries, the handwriting of the same author across all their stories. One word here, another hint there, false visions, references to a mysterious patroness, lover and mentor. Tragic coincidences, strangely non-random, peoples and countries were brought to destruction along different roads, but behind them there's always the same ominous shadow. And we know what that shadow is, Nerissa. The name sounds ominous, even in the mouth of the restless bard. The evil nymph who spent, who sent monsters to our land and did all that stuff to Tristan. But that's not even the most important thing. Most importantly, if you help us a bit, we can get her. What are we going to do? The bards know how to send messages through dreams. I try not to use it. For some reason, people got, got mad when I appeared in their dreams to read my new poems. And there might be a reason for that, Lindsay. Well, the storyteller came up with a ritual based on that spell. We'll collect everything that's uh, connected to Nerissa. Everything. Starting with her every track in the abandoned castle. After gathering everything, we'll unite his ability to tell stories with my ability to travel into dreams. So we'll be able to enter Nerissa's dream. Do we still have that amulet with a string of hair that she gave you before? Oh, I don't think so. That'd be great. What will we achieve by this? We'll learn all the evil secrets. The ritual... Well, let's see her hidden thoughts and dreams. Well, theoretically, it's not like anyone's ever done this before. It can be dangerous, a storyteller says quietly. In dreams, monsters are more terrible than those we meet in real world. But I urge you not to neglect this chance, King. You are opposed by a powerful enemy. One who has destroyed dozens of kingdoms and empires. You do not meet her face to face. Do not discover a weakness. Your country will end up just another of my stories. Fine, all audience will be provided with everything you need. Get me results. Come to me after we finish the preparations. And remember, I cannot send anyone except you. Fair enough. Nice Bokken. Thank you. You got a 10% chance. Why don't you give it a go, Heraldia? Sorry, tell us, strengthen your stuff. I'd like to support the general, but honestly, right now I've got all the stuff I need to get done. That in with. Go talk to people about these thefts. Then let's bugger off to Rushlight Tournament.
Actually, before that, I, I, we're close to the 24th. Might as well pass time and uh, meet our lad in the tavern. Oh, we need to talk to them too, too. Bengar stands beneath a tree, gloomily looking down the city below. Ah, there you are. Well, we found my tribe. Now we just have to uh, go have ourselves a friendly chat. Ah, I won't clench this face. What about Octavia? Did you learn about her family? We did. Turns out she's... Stop. No, I'm not. I'm shutting up. That's her news to tell you. How did you end up figuring it all out? Oh, that's another story entirely. We looked through Genesha's books for a while, and where he brought us from, whom, etc. And we got all we could from them, but checking up on the information would have meant travelling across all New Media and half the River Kingdoms. As you might recall, it wasn't exactly quiet here at the time. Not that it ever is, right? <laughs> but you know, we'd never leave you to clean a mess like this yourself. We ended up hiring a pretty brave crew headed for, uh, by a good scout. We can't do everything ourselves, right? They pulled some strings, followed some leads and figured everything out for us. Well, almost everything, the most important part. Octavia and I will find ourselves when we pay a visit to our families. You looking for revenge? Not sure what I want yet. Maybe, maybe not. Might be enough just looking at these freaks to be sure nature's punished them well enough without me. I'm really just looking for some closure, that's all. So who's your tribe? The sewer rats. Wait, no, that's not it. The crab lice? The threadbare moles? Man. I just can't remember. All oh, right, the dung pigs. The half hog gives you a lopsided grin. Fine, fine. They call themselves a the sharp fangs, and for good reason. Regengar grins, displaying his teeth. Smaller than an orcs, but still large and sharp. They have kids with orcs to straighten their blood. Not bad, eh? They breed themselves like pedigree cattle. So I've already been sold twice. First by my orc sow of a mother, who took some gold to push me and my brother out, never to see us again. Then my father chose which of us to keep and which to sell to the slavers. Treated like an animal my whole life. Surprised I'm not barking on all fours. You don't bark though, you go straight for the throat. Everyone help who helped make your animal will regret it bitterly. A cruel smirk plays across Dragon Gar's face, that's for sure. <laughs> right, that's come, we'll get what they deserve. Well, let's go meet your tribe. New Octavia. Octavia pensively figures, uh, fiddles with a small metal trinket while she waits. It takes her a moment to notice you as you approach. Oh, hi. It seems we haven't been properly introduced, allow me, Octavia Della Fioni, heir to a noble title, a family manner, even a coat of arms and a motto. With a sad smile, Octavia shows you a trinket she was playing with. It's a fibula, decorated with a coat of arms, a butterfly and an arrow. At the bottom you see the motto, serve solely my conscience. Well, we know about Regan Gas Pass now. So you're from a noble family? I could hardly believe it myself, but there's no doubt. I'm the missing daughter of Marchioness Della Fione. Missing, that's what they're calling it. How did you discover all this? Took a lot of work after going through Genesha's ledgers. Not only did we find out information about our po uh, purchase, we found a wealth of other data as well. Connections, suppliers, meeting places. Tracking it all down ourselves would require crossing out the River Kingdoms. Couldn't abandon you. So we did the boring practical thing. Yeah, we know you hire people. Finding my family was relatively easy. The Marchioness was already looking for me herself. They just needed to put a few pieces together to realise I was the missing heir of the Della Fiore family. On the other hand, Regis tribe had to be found with a looking glass. But it's no matter. We certainly paid them well for their trouble. Do you know where to find your family? There isn't one, really. The Della Fiore family was waning before I was born. My mother's the last one. She's living in Pitax in a small townhouse. I'm going to pay her a visit and I'd like you to accompany me. Fine, I'll travel with you. Thank you, it means a lot to me. Right. You see a stout man, etc, etc. Island, your great, your highness. Uh, captain of the city guard. Lisa said it was you who discovered the throne was missing. Captain growl, uh, grows gloomy. Yes, your highness. 
He keeps silence for a moment and continues obviously embarrassed. Actually, your highness, please don't think me a fool or a drunkard. As I walked into the throne room, at first I thought it was a vision. I didn't think much of it. Well, I thought I saw your throne in the corridor. And it was running away. Not by itself, of course. I just couldn't see who was carrying it. Perhaps someone really tiny got underneath it. And my, how they ran. It seemed the throne turned the corner by itself. But the sight was strange beyond belief, so I thought I'd simply too tired and had started seeing things. A moment later, when I discovered it was literally mi uh, really missing, I rushed after it, but it had vanished into thin air. Maybe it was, you know, magic. That's what I'm thinking. Alright, I'm not worried about the guard, Captain. You proved yourself, so I'm not going to ask you questions. Uh, the smith. Birdall. The trader, Hassoff. Have you had, heard about the threats plague in the city? Birdle France heard. Your Highness, I myself am a victim of those thefts. Stole my tools right from under my very nose. I was in the backyard getting coal from a furnace and I heard some noise inside. I ran in and the thief jumped right into the magic portal and vanished. I didn't even get a good look. Fair enough. Uh, what about you, Hassoff? Anything? Right, so... Probably enchanting things to make them run through magic portals to wherever you want. Unless it's goblins. Knock knock. The man bows here spreading his arms a little. Hassle from Absalom. Yeah, 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 that's fine. You know where golden go go stolen goods are sold? Hassle squints cunningly. How very polite. You do not ask me directly, but no, I am not involved in such shady dealings. Although the local traders sometimes claim otherwise. Some say that anything that's lying about will be stolen in the city, but then cannot be found for sale. You are not the first to ask about stolen goods. Many hope to find on the black market what precious things were stolen from their homes, but alas, it would seem the thieves have their own ways of getting rid of the stolen goods. Alright, well, thank you. And that leaves us with the uh, inn. Naturally, before I do... <coughs> Looking campy. Oh, we can. We don't actually need to camp though, we're just trying to pass time. Third. New event, a hero's remains. Musha, you can't do it, can you? Fourth. Right. With that, we'll go to the tavern. Talk to the innkeeper. Talk to Jubilost. Then leave and go to the rushlight. Looks like that's our moon. I'd like to know what leaving her path means to her. What's our moon? And more importantly, how is all this related to the story of the gnomes? I hope we're about to find out. Jubilos clears his throat to attract her attention. Oh. Woman here. Yeah? Oh, Luna. Oh. A girl with unusual silver grey hair. Looking gloomily into a mug of ale, as she notices Jubilos clearing his throat, she raises her face and brightens. Oh, they told me that the King of Yorkshire walks the streets and feasts with everyone in the taverns, but I never believed it. Oh, forgive me, Your Highness. I'm Luna Katari, 
You have an unusual name. I was born with bright silver hair. The midwives never saw an Asama before. They were frightened, but my mother, not a bit. She said her daughter's hair was silver like the moon, which meant I was blessed by Desna. Hence the name. Actually, I've always been drawn to faraway countries like any, anyone touched by the moon goddess. But I've never been beyond the River Kingdoms, Luna's eyes. Tell me about yourself. I'm a messenger. I deliver correspondence from Brevoy to Mvon and back. Okay, so that's your path. Usually reports about a rich merchant underlings and his orders for them. My parents live in Brevoy and the girl I love in Mevon. Okay. <coughs> I've always dreamed of becoming a traveller, but that's not easy. For the daughter of a weaver and a trip washerwoman. I was glad to find this messenger job though. I thought that was pretty lucky. But now I'm travelling the same road over and over every month. I even sit here in the tavern on the 24th of every month right on schedule. The monotony is driving me to tears, but what can I do? I can't be everywhere at once and I can't stand the thought of settling down. Jubiloster was listening surprisingly carefully, leans over to you and says, Do you see it now? When the moon leaves a path, another part of the riddle. riddle. It looks like we need somehow to convince our new friend to quit her well-trodden path and set off somewhere new. Plus, it would be good for her. The same road each month if I were rather I'd drown myself long ago. I didn't bleed sooner. <coughs> if this life troubles you, something should be changed. Your family and friends want you happy. Not exhausted and hating your existence. I know, but it's it's easy to know. <coughs> it's much harder to actually do something about it. Here, take it. You can spend it on travelling and seeing the world. The girl looks at the coins in this bleep, but this is a very large sum. Of course, you're the king, but you barely know me. Take it, take it, Jubilos says protective, protectively. Believe me, travelling is contagious. You take one small step from your house, and you'll never be able to stop. The world is beautiful. Especially when you're not discovering it alone. Not that I myself ever... Mm -hmm. Jubilos stammers and pretends he needs to wipe his glasses. I'll leave you to one of my almacs. To help you find your way around the, st uh, the start. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, I don't even know how to repay you, but on the other hand, maybe I do. Luna searches her back quickly. Please take this, it's a relic my family received from an elven ancestor. According to the family legend, the one who deciphers the map will find three things. An incredibly sad secret, a true treasure, and a door to another world, which will never open again. The answer at uh, the entrance to a certain dungeon is marked here. But there's nothing to say where to go looking. You're a king with all the best scientists and travellers serving you. Surely they'll be able to read this map. Thanks again. Now I have to go. Well. Another step along it there. Ha. Moon has left her path. But now. Who can explain to me why the horse didn't simply tell us. Go to the dungeon located here. <coughs> I can. Because it's Britain's a game to them. I make us run around in circles, because everything's a game to them. Let's have a look at this map. What do you have here? Why, I recognise the area around the Candlemere at first glance. There are ancient ruins in this area. The dungeon must have contained traces of the very first gnomes to visit Galarian. My goal is clear. Now we only need to achieve it. Oh, well, it's a mysterious cave, but we're not doing that right now. Elena, I need to find a rare book. Uh, hey, there's been a number of thefts in town. You know anything about it? Of course I heard about it, Your Highness. Many houses have been robbed, and here's what's strange. No pick locks, no broken windows. How do the scoundrels get inside, huh? Those thieves are real masters of getting into other people's houses. And they steal whatever they find. At one house they stole the silverware. And another one, they left the money, but took the children's toys. Strange thieves. We already had the book, we don't care about that anymore. Okay, so now we have to wait till it appears for sale anyway. But it's time to leave. So we've got to wait for that one. Mysterious caves. Davia's mother. 
Regengar's tribe. But right now, we need to go to the Rushlight. You can go. You can come back. There's a cave. We're not doing that right now. There's a rush light. Uh, go this way. Anything going on back here? Tracking the throne thief, can't do that yet. Contagious madness. Ugh. Nothing to do. No point in trying to do something that you got zero percent for. A rest would be well. No, you don't. Not yet. Now we take a quick rest. What are you riding in there again? You know, something about someone. I'll let you read it once I'm finished. It's hilarious. <laughs> Now we pop into the rush light. King Edvetic greets you personally, the bulky Kellid is broad shouldered and looks to be somewhere around 50 years of age. His golden crown sits on long greasy hair above a heavily powdered face in bristle and his expensive doublet is stained with oily spots. He go forward as he squeezes you in a bear hug, enveloping you in a mixed sense of sweat, wine and expensive perfume. Well, my crown bearing brother, welcome to my home. Stuff yourself, drink, be my guest. You've proven yourself in combat as well as affairs of state. Hmm. Let's see how you do at having fun. Oh, I can have plenty of fun. I feel like a child in a sweet shop, entertainment, shopping, new trade set connections, and the smell of intrigue in the air. You're the epitome of hospitality, aren't you? Not to, no, uh, no. I'm happy to finally meet you, playing nice. It's no good for kings and queens to stay in our palaces all the time. I certainly don't do that. We need to meet, be friends with one another. It's all about keeping up neighborly relations. So here's the plan. First, the fish's triathlon. Then, a boasting contest. And in the evening, the best part, <laughs> a drunken melee. In the interim, there'll be a buffet, a fair, jugglers, acrobats, all the usual entertainment. And after the melee, I'll announce the winner. And then we'll have a festive banquet and a fireworks show. <laughs> then we just drink till morning or find a tent to crawl into. Your own or someone else's, depending on your luck. By the way... A knockout such as yourself will always be welcome in my tent. Uh, <laughs> just joking. Just a joke. <laughs> well, I appreciate the joke, Your Majesty. Your fellow Majesty. There are plenty of others to warm my bed without uh, a poisonous snake slithering in there. Oh, and one more thing. 
I'll have to seal your sheath. This is a peaceful celebration, after all, and bullies will be kicked out immediately. Oh, we'll get by without it after. It's a king who decided to kick up a row, or just a shopkeeper. So behave yourself, and don't start any fights while you're here. Well, I have to go. If you need anything, talk to Nunzio Arpaia. He is my master of ceremonies, so he's responsible for organizing this mess. <laughs> Have fun. Talk to Italian Gitterum. Where are you? Where are they? Who's this? The young man staggers towards you, his expensive doublet wet with wine. As he passes, he brushes shoulders with you. Starts yelling, his breath rank with alcohol. Watch yourself. Who do you think you are, you pig? You trampled on my foot and ruined my doublet, hick. I'm gonna demand satisfaction. Could go for that. I think we're gonna go for that. No one notices you drive a swift blow into the bully solar plexus. It simply seems though he swayed and leaned on you, after which you graciously helped him step away and lie down in the shade. I won't be halted. I made the tournament's frivolity, you know, it's too many here by having a heated but uh, hush discussion. One wears flashy clothing fit for an entertainer, where the other wears steel armour and red cloak and pit axe as guard. Difficult to hear what they're saying. Creep closer and listen. Although the two huddle near one another, their voices only occasionally rising above the ambient laughter and music, you're able to overhear the rest of the conversation. The guard sternly chides the entertainer. I don't know quite what you're up to, Aymar, but I know that, look, you're planning something, something dangerous. This isn't the time, you know, he's become harsher about... Look around you, Talwin, Aymar interjects. This celebration is just more blood and sport to cover the ongoing troubles. Bread and circuses, my friend, even the Romans knew that. And we've helped each other shepherd it along. This isn't the future we had planned for. It's the one that the fates have dealt. Can we really stand by? He begins to raise his hand and strike a pause. They're preparing to make a bold declaration. The guard's hand intercepts Imar's arm, firmly preventing the entertainer from making a scene. You know how harsh justice is these days? I've seen it with my own eyes, and it would crush me to see noble intentions harming good people, especially like you. I appreciate the feelings I do. Imar gently removes Talwin's hand from his arm. What Pitax needs now is action, and I intend to act. The entertainer looks up, spots you, and smiles as Talwin frozen, uh, frowns and sadly walks away. It's a rare day that life emulates screen plays, your highness. Could it be that heroes have arrived and the people's need of time? He barely opened his mouth before he made my teeth itch with all his treacle and nonsense. Oh, heroism. That's exactly what we do. See that symbol on his clothing? That marks him as a member of the Red Crescent Theatre in Pitax, a fellow artist. Jeegly extracts a journal. Imagine the stories we could write together. Seems to be the problem. First arrived here five years ago, answering King Hervetti's call for artists and actors to make Pitax a new crucible of the arts. Admittedly, the King dedicated plenty of money to building new theatres and schools. Art only thrives, though, when there are visitors and patrons to pay for it. I my sidles closer, lowering his voice. And that's where Rivetti failed. The Pitax River, in our lifetime, connecting us, uh, is our lifeline, connecting us with the outside world. River pirates know it and they prey upon incoming travellers. You might think the king would thwart these pirates and defend his people, but no. He only sent escorts to protect key shipments, leaving everyone else to their pirates' depredations. This tournament, it hides how we suffered under the king's inaction. 
Now when the king's soldiers cannot or will not vanquish the villains, what happens in the stories? He winks and gestures on, uh, knowingly. That's right, hero stepping. Numerous victims have told me of the attacks and I have pieced together the approximate location of the pirates' camp. You can ambush and defeat them. Traffic will flow. Commerce will thrive. And you will command the adoration of the boatmen, dock workers, artists and more. Naturally, I'm prepared to write a play dramatising your exploits. What do you say? Well, we're ready to throw out the river pirates, I accept. I'm always itching for a fight, how's that? I mark grins eagerly, then it's settled. I'll write down the de uh, directions real quick, and when you're done, you meet me in Pitax, so I can hear your account. No doubt magi the magistrate will be pleased to stop getting piracy complaints too. He draws a roll of parchment from the scroll tube. I hope you arrive in time to see my latest production. Consider this little preview. Who cares? I don't care about your production, really. A trader, trader, can be real. And that's an exit. Hey, you can't be in here. Hi, hey, this is Hi Highness King Erves' camp. Alright. I must be lost, I'll just keep going. Oh, there she is. Greetings, Your Highness. I'm Atalia Gitteron, Headmaster of the Academy of Grand Arts. Welcome to the tournament. Is this your first time here? I'll be honest. I'm delighted to hear what you've done with Yorkshire. Not so long ago, it was little more than a hole in the ground. But you brought it real civilization. Bravo. Lindsay has some interesting news for you. Yes, Professor Leopold found refuge in our capital. And you know what? He's writing his memoirs of his time in the Academy. I'm sure it'll be entertaining read for everyone in Pitax. No, all of Avistan. A book, you say? How brave of him. I hope he doesn't neglect to include all the details of his dismissal. Italia's voice is ice cold and bone dry. What details? What do you mean? In a way to kick Professor Eobald out for being too smart, didn't he? I'm sure that's exactly how he described it. They call him the insightful for a reason, after all. Anyway, forgive me, but I've no interest in discussing this topic further. If you'd like to exchange idle gossip, I'm sure you can find much more willing and interesting company here. I suspect you know to who I'm referring. Well, that's that one. Need to talk to Nunzio. There he is. Your Royal Highness, welcome to the Rushlight Tournament. My name is Nuncio Ar Arpaia. And I'm... Uh, and I have the honour of being His Highness King Erebetes. Master of Ceremonies. You could say the organisation of this tournament rests on my shoulders. If you need anything... Ready to participate in the vicious triumph on Begin. Honestly, I think it's all bluff and bluster with uh, Erebetes, so... I'm not all that interested in the background. Trumpet sounded over the arena, announcing the commencement of the Fisher's Triathlon. We were to distinguish ourselves in three sports, if you could call them such. You be the judge, dear reader. The first round was uh, fish carrying, if you can believe it. They built narrow bridges over pits of mud and placed barrels on the other end. One side filled with fish, the other side empty. The goal was to get all the fish from one side to the other barehanded without falling in the mud. I'm sure this is just what you imagine for a royal tournament. 
throwing fish at your opponent was prohibited. So there was one official, uh, but well understood rule in the tournament. Don't get caught. We had to decide which ones would participate as well as how fair we wanted to play. We tried to cheat by discreetly throwing fish at our opponents. Competing honestly against such company would be more embarrassing than losing. As Octavia ran across the bridges with heaps of fish in her arms, she deftly tossed a fish beneath the feet of the Galton competitor, who slipped and fell into mud. Another fish found its way right to the Dagomart competitor's forehead, sending him down alongside the Graltoner. The judges didn't notice a thing. We won the second, uh, the first round. Second round was untying knots. Competitors will be tied up on poles, resembling ship masts, and they had to escape the ropes. Once again, I had a choice to make. We noticed a sharp coin glistening in the Dagomart competitor's mouth, and the Groton participant had a blade in hand. We explored the cheaters, leading us with fewer rivals. The judges escorted the cheaters out of the arena, the crowd laughing and whistling all the while. With a third of the competition gone, Octavia easily outpaced the others, untangling the ropes and making her way to the judges, while the others still wriggled in their bonds like flies in a spider web. We'd won two out of three rounds. We seemed to have a victory in our bag. But with the rivals we were dealing with, there was no time to relax. The last round of the tournament was diving for river pearls. Huge tubs were filled with mussels in the river water, and some of the empty jars had been placed on sets of scales. We'd have to open the mussels with our bare hands, gather the pearls, and deposit them in the team's jar. Of course, if playing fair wasn't a priority, we could always try weighing down the jar with other things as well. We tried to cheat by slipping some pebbles into our jar. Octavia barely dove into the muddy water and started opening shells. Or bravely rather, breaking her nails in the process. Put fistfuls of pearls in a jar as fast as you could, slipping in an occasional pebble, pinch of sand or dollop of mud when possible. Once time was up, a jar was the heaviest, a victory for us. As soon as we stood on the pedestal, the judges awarded our team victory. We were wet, muddy and smelled of fish. We grinned with joy all the same. Got to talk to Nunzio again. All right. Ready to participate in the boasting contest. Everyone's ready. Let's begin. The tournament continued with the boasting contest. The first participant, a man from Dagomark, steps up to the podium and told a raunchy story about him sneaking into the temple of Calistria and seducing all the priestesses, including the high priestess, in a single night. The crowd was particularly amused by the suggestive glances he kept. Uh, casting towards one of the guests from Timon, simply smiled mysteriously in response. The second participant was from Gralton, who told a completely implausible tale about his travels across other plains, where he battled undead hordes and defeated a blood-curdling monster. He was an average storyteller at best, he'd be lucky to get a C for that story in the academy, but the listeners were inexplicably elated. Suspicious, we took a closer look at the crowd and of course, we spotted a bard using some tricks, and likely a little magic to aid the Groton man's performance. Snuck up on the bard, stabbed him in the back and disappeared. The bard collapsed to the ground, choking on his own blood. By the time the crowd noticed, we were long gone. Needless to say, the audience and impression of the Groton participant's performance was ruined. Then it was Pitax's turn, the kingdom's honour was represented by Anamid Bellavara, a sweet voice singer whose smile could win over most withered of hearts. Oh, Anamid. But while her voice was smoother than silk, her words stung like arrows. With a soft smile, Anamid told everyone how she'd spent months in our kingdom, 
learning our secrets and investigating a riot. Of course, the honest trade of the bard and the shady dealings of the spy often go hand in hand, but... Oh, Anna Mead, who could have expected such an ugly blow from such a lovely lady? She described in surprising and exceptionally critical detail how much citizens of our young state suffered under the atrocities of the troll assaults and magic plague. She never stopped, stooped to actual lies, but she made it sound as though our king, Baron at the time, was simply drinking and debauching while his subjects struggled. She made our crusade against Mordecai look like a cunning conquest of Vanhold, and the war with the Tiger Lords was characterised as an irresponsible venture. Talk about cruel and unfair when Anamid finished and left the stage. It was our turn to perform. What feats did our participant decide to tell their, uh, their performance? In response to Anamid's story, it recounts how we dealt with Tartuccio, another one of Irrevet's spies. Looking meaningfully at Anamid, Lindsay spoke to the, of the sad fate that befell the last of Irrevet's spies of what may be in store for any other spies we might come across. The audience hung on her every word, sometimes laughing uncontrollably, sometimes holding their breath to avoid missing anything. Lindsay finally brought the story of an end, uh, to an end, and the viewers gave her a standing ovation as she left the podium. The woman from Timon, a priestess of Calistria, went last. She told stories of her love affair in faraway countries and on other planes, casually mentioning an unpleasant disease she contracted over her journeys, that took her a long time to get rid of. Hearing that, the uh, participant from Dagamark paled and grabbed at his belt, bringing roaring laughter from the rest of the crowd. And finally, the judges announced the winner, Lindsay. She walked up to the podium to thunderous applause and took another bow. And there's a third one still to do, but first, where's Anna Mead? Okay, well that one failed. Alright. I guess we had to talk to Arnamid first. So be it. Your Royal Highness, welcome to the Forestite Tournament. Yep. And the Drunken Melee. Then let's begin, it will be splendid. Coming in at me, are they? Out of my way. Yeah! Run them through. Nice and easy, does it? Learn the result of the tournament. The tournament finished, isn't it? I'd like to know one. Yes, and it's just about to make a speech now saying the winner. Look, everyone's gathering around now. Lords and ladies, another rush-like tournament has come to an end. 
I'd like to thank all of you who honored this event with your presence. My friends, I'm happy to see all of you, but I'd like to give a special welcome to one guest who found themselves invited here for the first time. Today, we had the Baron, no, excuse me, it's King now, isn't it? Of a majority of what was once the Stolen Lands. Thank you for coming, my darling. I can call you that, right? I thank you with all my heart. I first learned of him from my friend Stefano Mosca. Oh, him. To be honest, his report was less than flattering. Impassable swamps, monsters galloping about, and a complete absence of any valuable resources. Nothing more than a dirty hole ruled by another bandit lord, hardly worthy of your attention. That's what he wrote back then. I'm so happy he was wrong. Mm -hmm. Stefano himself seems to have vanished somewhere in the neighboring domain, unfortunately. Perhaps he met a hydra on his way back or drowned in the omnipresent mm. mud. Or maybe he just caught the Baron that could in be. a bad mood, eh? <laughs> you don't want to push joke, it, do you? A joke, a joke. Stefano was a great fellow. It's a pity he joined the many travelers who vanish in those lands each year. Truth be told, even now traveling that domain is a less than pleasurable experience. Some roads have appeared, but their safety leaves much to be desired. Take the sad story of a poor Toman Henvaki from Grouton. He set off to those lands and hasn't been seen since. His brother, Idrist, went to find the poor fellow, and what happened? The Baron found the body in the blink of an eye, almost as though it was stored in his cellar. <laughs> and the hunt Watch the Baron what went on, clearly imitating my tournament, it was beyond description. While guests were out hunting hydras and owl bears, the latter came from behind and ate at the banquet table, along with all the servants. Some celebration, right? I'm flattered by your borderline disturbing attention to my persona. Why don't we include you in the discussion as well? For example, I heard an amusing story of some students from your academy. <coughs> right. <coughs> yes. <laughs> I did get a bit carried away, didn't I? You think? All I really wanted to get at was that His Highness is a personage truly as extraordinary as his land. And I'm happy to see him at this celebration. And now it's time to announce the winner of the tournament. This year, all three contests were won by guests from one kingdom. I'm not sure what charms, tricks, or divine intervention helped him, but let's hear it for the winner. Your Highness, if you please. I know you're not exactly a master of ceremonies, but Please try to say something articulate to my guests. <laughs> Your Highness, dear guests, attending this tournament was a great honour and a true pleasure. Thank you all for this unforgettable day. <laughs> Better the best efforts to smear you in the eyes of the guests. The audience is elated. Your speech can as a hearty round of applause. And now, with the competition over and the prize awarded, let's get on with the main part of the celebration. The banquet! I can hear your stomachs growling from here. Let's get to the table, and later we'll see an unforgettable fireworks show! And so we win! Right. I got to wait for the news. Tournament is over. The King Erevetti wasn't very friendly. Overall, everything was settled peacefully. Perhaps the infestation, well, of course, it was a dirty trick. We just got to see what he's got planned. 
No, I can't believe that. There must be some kind of catch or it wouldn't be in a betty. I think we'll be hearing some news from Pitax in the future. Don't know about the runaway throne. But wait for that. And we've got to go take on the pirates. We also need to talk to Arim. Octavia's mother, Regungar's tribe. That's where Regungar's tribe is, I guess. And Octavia's mother's in Pitax somewhere. Wherever Pitax is. Right! That's where we leave it for today, my friends. Join us next time when we'll pop over to the sort out the pirates of the river bend. In the meantime, you've been fine traveling companions. I've been Yorkshire Barbarian, and this has been Pathfinder Kingmaker. <laughs>